So this video is a continuation of last video. So in this video, we're going to get started with some code to go over some of the elements and tags that we've learned, and then we'll continue to go over the rest of the tags and elements. For our web scraping, the first thing we want to do is we want to import two different modules. So the first module is uh, requests, and the uh, second module, beautiful soup itself. So the way to import beautiful soup is to type in from bs4 import beautiful soup the thing you have to be careful about is when importing beautiful soup you want to make sure that the b and s are capitalized now what's the reason for importing two different modules the first module uh, request is actually going to pull the data and store the data in a variable what the beautiful soup does beautiful soup helps parse the data so beautiful soup does not actually go get the data, it just helps parse the data. Okay, so now we need a URL, and in this case we'll, we're going to use a market watch once again. So let's, let me just type this, marketwatch.com, and that looks okay. And you want to make sure that uh, whenever you use a URL, you can't just type in the www, you have to actually put in the HTTP portion as well. For some reason, uh, I think it's beautiful soup. I'm not sure if it's also Selenium, but some of these uh, modules, they're always required to put in HTTP as opposed to just www. And if you don't do so, you you won't be able to scrape the data. So now the next thing we want to do is uh, create a response variable, and this is going to hold the HTML that we get from the URL. We imported requests. Now request.get will get the, the data from, from the URL that we input. Let's just run these three lines. One, two, three. And now if we check response.txt, this should uh, output all of the HTML data. So response.txt. And let's just make sure that we did in fact pull the data. It looks like we did pull the data because we see stock market news financial. We don't see any errors or forbidden or 40202 or any of the status code numbers. Uh, I think 404. All right, so everything looks good. So we don't need this output anymore. Let me just get rid of the output. Oh, actually one thing I wanted to go over is for some reason, I, you can either use response.txt or response content. I'm not sure exactly what the difference is. I've seen these both of these used. Um, they seem to be very similar. Let's see. Talk. Okay, so so we'll just move on from that. Uh, the difference seems to be uh, response.content is written in uh, bits, bytes, and response.txt is just in a sort of, some sort of string format. But what I usually see is uh, response.content when uh, creating a soup object. Let's just get started with creating a soup object. What you do is uh, you use uh, the beautiful soup. Uh, always remember, uh, capital B, capital S. And then within beautiful soup, we have two different parameters. The first parameter is content, uh, response.content, which, which is holding all of the HTML content. And the second one is a parser. So in this case, we'll use HTML parser. You just sort of have to memorize uh, that there's two different parameters and we're going to use an HTML parser. There are different parsers available, but HTML is the default parser and I haven't really ran into any problems. If you do run into problems, you can try out the different parsers. For this case, we're just going to stick with the HTML. Now, I just want to give you a simple example how we can actually find a certain div, uh, how we can pull out a div section. So we're going to say soup.findall div, and now let's decide on which div we want to pull out. So we're going to go back to the market watch page. So the latest news, okay. So let's just, uh, let's pull out something from here. So we're going to inspect this portion, and now we're just going to sort of highlight different parts of the HTML code, the elements. Here we go. So we find what we're looking for. So you guys can probably cannot see what's written here. Let me see. I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but it shows a div class element element latest news. Unfortunately, I don't know how to copy just this line. Copy selector, because I want to just copy paste, but when I copy this, 
it's going to copy all of these uh, diff contents that are uh, all the sub layers as well located within this uh, div class. So let's just go back to our web scraping and let me just uh, print this out. Okay, so these are all the contents that are located within the div we're interested in. And right now I just want to show you guys how to how to use soup to find this certain section. And then you guys can do other things to the uh, contents within this section. So the, the div we're searching for is a div with the class name element element latest news. Now let's see element element latest news. So what we want to do is first we put in div because that's the element we're searching for and now the attribute type in the attribute. So in this case uh, class is represented by class and an underscore. Class underscore represents the uh, class attribute when using beautiful soup. So you want to use the class attribute with the underscore then you put equals and now we just we just uh, input the the class name. So in this case, it's just, uh, let me just get rid of this. It's a uh, quotation marks and it's element, element, latest news, which I just copied and pasted from here. So this, soup.findall, we're looking for a div tag with the class name of this. So this should be able to find um, this particular uh, div. So if you click, if we run this code, as you can see, we find this uh, particular uh, div class. One thing you have to be careful of, soup.findall finds all instances of whatever we're searching for. So remember I told you that classes can have multiple instances. So we can actually have multiple instances of a div with this particular class. Because classes are not uh, unique, only IDs are unique. When we use findall, we're finding all the instances of div with the class name element element latest news. And to prevent us from, from finding, I guess, the wrong instances, what we can first do is actually use uh, len. In this case, we'll use len to see exactly how many instances we're finding. Because the result of this is going to be a list-like structure uh, called a result set. So we're going to just uh, find the len of this. And in this case, the len is 1. So that means we only found one instance of uh, this uh, div and class element element latest new. So that just verifies or that just gives us more confidence that the what we did find, the div class element element latest news was in fact the one that we were looking for. So I think I want to show you guys an example of using div with ID. Um, we just use soup.findall to find a div with a specific class and the class parameter uses uh, this uh, underscore. Now I'm going to show you an example with uh, div and id. So let's just uh, do what we did. Same thing, soup, soup.find. And always remember, when you use find all, to always use an underscore. This is very important. If you just use find all, the uh, code will still run without uh, throwing up any errors, but your, um, your result list will come out empty. So in this case, we'll use uh, div again. Remember, the first element, when you use find all, the first element is always the, uh, a tag. It's an element or a tag. Then you insert a comma. You can search by ID by typing in ID. ID equals, and then use two quotation marks. And now you have to put the, uh, the value of the ID. So let's go back to Market Watch and see if we have any luck trying to find, um, let's just actually look at the source and see, let's just uh, control F and see if there are any IDs. Um, let's see. I don't really see any. Just go back. Well, um, in this case, I can't really seem to find any good examples of div and ID with Market Watch, but just remember that um, if we're going to, if you want to find particular div uh, based on an ID, you just use the ID keyword. Earlier, we used uh, the class keyword. The class keyword has a, a underscore, but when we use ID, ID is just uh, just an ID. Okay, so now I would like to just go over some of the uh, other elements. So say we have a paragraph, right? So earlier I showed you paragraphs we have which contain tons of text. Now say you only wanted to say highlight or color a certain par portion of that, that paragraph or one word. So span is can be used in between tags. So in this case, say we have a paragraph 
and then um, we wanted to turn this uh, this uh, very into blue what we'd have to do is we would have to use span and then you can use the style color blue so span is used it's used to style certain words that are located within uh, another tag so the next thing and this is important links now links in a website are represented by the uh, a tag so this is very important because we're going to want to get a lot of links so links have an attribute called href which holds the link so a also uh, holds text which is usually the title given to the link. All right, so here's an example from Mozilla Firefox. So we'll have an A, which is the tag, and the attribute we want is ref. So how would we pull this out? Let's, let's, let's go to, actually, let's go to MarketWatch. And so if we look, let's look at some of the, uh, the code. All right, so we're just gonna sort of dive in here. So here we go. So I don't know if you can see this, guys, but, um, it's a and the name of the class is link and then there's href. So we, we sort of we have two attributes in this case. We're not going to look for specific links, but just uh, how to plot general links. Okay. So if you wanted to plot the hrefs, um, we have to use a special method called get. So say we wanted to plot all the links. One thing we can do is soup dot find all. Okay. Now we want to find all a's, right? So we want to find all a's. Right, in this case, we'll just find the first day. Uh, if I try to find all days, it, the output is going to be too much. So soup dot find uh, find a. The soup dot find a is going to find the first instance of the element a. Okay. So here we have soup dot find a. Now we want to be able to get the href. So how do we do that? Well, we can use the get href. Get. Just type in uh, href. So in this case, soup.find will find the first instance of A, and from A we want to pull out the href. So this should pull out the href. In this case, it pulls out a clean link. So if you want to pull out the href, the attribute href from uh, the A tags, we have to use this uh, get href. So that's just a simple way you can get the href from, a, from an A tag. All right. So the next thing I want to go over is going to be tables. Remember, I'm just giving you a brief overview of everything. I will go more into depth of um, how we can pull out specific hrefs or specific tags and do specific things when we actually go over Beautiful Soup and do some projects. For in this case, I just want to show you what each element is, what each tag is, give you a couple lines of code so you just get an understanding how you can pull things out. Okay, so uh, that's it for this video. Um, this video has gone longer than I expected, so we'll have to continue with the next video. So in the next video, we'll go over the rest of the elements, such as table, which is a, a pretty important tag element, and, um, and lists. Yeah, so tables and lists, and I think those are the only two remaining. But uh, So that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next video.